So one of the one of my favorite pastimes uh, back when I was in varsity and even after I left was tracking the Forbes and Bloomberg list of billionaires and reading up on articles and watching documentaries and doing research on the wealthiest people in the world, on the African continent and in South Africa in particular. So today's video is going to be a bit educational. Um, it won't hopefully be too short. Um, South Africa has got a, a very rich business history of working with Jewish people. The Jewish community in this country, I think, officially sits at about 70,000 people. Very, very small group of people, but they are very influential in this country, on the continent, and in the rest of the world as well. Some of the great Jewish business people that we have in this country include people like Nathan or Nati Kirsch, um, the Enthoven family of Hollard, Brian Joffe um, of Bidvest, um, and a whole host of others. Today, I just want to do, I want to like read a few articles on Eric Samson of Max Steel, one of the wealthiest people that you've probably never heard of in this country. I'll start where? Let's start here. Eric Samson passed away on the 19th of January 2021, that was last year, at the age of 82. Uh, the board and entire management of Max Steel Group are deeply saddened by his passing after joining his father's fencing and wiring business, Pan Africa Stahl Handel. In 1958, he became MD of the company in 1965 and he later founded Mechanic Steel and Fencing, which is now named Max Steel. For people that have gone to like rugby games, stadiums, there's normally like Max Steel signs. It's these big blue signs with white writing written Max Steel. Bup, 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 bup. Stuff is all on Google, by the way. Whenever people ask me like, how do you know all this stuff? It's because I read. <laughs> if you guys do a bit of reading, you'll figure some of these things out. Uh, sorry, the article I read for, from was from miningweekly.com. It was published. No, 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 no. I'm lying. I'm lying. Sorry. It was from engineeringnews.com. It was published uh, on the 21st of January, 2021. Uh, and it was written by Mick Davis. Just need to make sure that I reference properly to show that I'm educated and the like. This one is from jpost.com. It was published on the 19th of January, 2021, written by Steve Linder, or Lindy. Eric Samson, South African Jewish giant and philanthropist, dies in Newport. South African steel tycoon and philanthropist Eric Samson died at his Newport, California home on Tuesday at the age of 83. Eric was a visionary leader and nation builder and a man of unsurpassed generosity one whose multifaceted legacy will benefit our country long into the future, the South African Jewish Board of Deputies said in a statement. Innumerable organizations and individuals benefited from his support throughout his life. This was true not just for the South African Jewish community, of which he was a devoted member, but for the people of South Africa as a whole and for the state of Israel. Samson's fortune, made primarily from steel and real estate assets, he amassed through his Max Steel Holding Company was valued at 1.1 billion US dollars, according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. In 1998, he purchased 49% of Iskur, then a joint venture between Isco, a state-owned South African steel producer, and the Israel-based Kur Industries, and soon gained full control of the combined company. Just to touch on a little bit, his company last year was valued at $1.1 billion. If we're using roughly a 15 rand to $1 valuation, that means it was valued at 15 billion rand. Uh, in 1980, he bought, he, bought, he bought a joint venture, or he purchased 40% of Iskor, which was a joint venture. Iskor was founded by Hendrik van der Beel, who I believe is one of the greatest South Africans we've ever had. Commissioned by, I believe, Prime Minister Jan Smuts. He built Iskor, he built Iskom. He built Arms Corps, which uh, manufactured some of our weapons. And then Isco was later on bought on by Max Steel, Eric Samson, and also by Metal Steel, uh, which is owned by Lakshmi Metal, who at some point used to be the wealthiest man from India, but who is based in London. As we can see, Eric Samson uh, was based in America, even though he was born in Cape Town in South Africa and matriculated at the Johannesburg Parktown Boys High. 
After leaving Parktown, as I'd read earlier, he went and he joined his father's fencing and wiring business and then went on to build Max Steel into a giant. Eric Sampson and his wife Sheila donated millions of dollars to Karen Hyassot, the Barzillai Bar Bar Medical Center and the Eric and Sheila Sampson New Emergency Surgical Hospital in Ashkelon. The Sampson Asuta Ashdod Hospital and the Eric and Sheila Sampson Prime Minister's Prize, a prestigious international award which grants a million dollars annually for groundbreaking innovation in the fields of smart mobility and alternative fuels for transportation. He was a close friend and supporter of the late South African President Nelson Mandela, as well as current President Cyril Ramaphosa, who was part of a consortium that bought a quarter of his flagship business, Maxteel Service Center South Africa, in 2006. The Samsons divided their time between Cape Town, Los Angeles, and Tel Aviv. He served on the board of the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund for two decades and donated a million rand to it every July to mark the South African leader's birthday. Samson is survived by his wife and three children, Dorothy, Frankie, and Jeffrey, 10 grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. So how my brain works, obviously, is when you read these articles and some of these names and things pop up. Nelson Mandela, Children's Fund, Cyril Ramaphosa, who bought a quarter with a consortium. Then I go and I research further into other things. So this is from miningweekly.com, an article from the 30th of August, 2006, written by Terence Kremer. The title is Max Steel announces sale of 25.5% of South African unit to Empowerment Consortium. Africa's largest steel merchant. So now we know that this is Africa's largest steel merchant. Max Steel Service Center South Africa, MSCSA, announced its much-anticipated Black Economic Empowerment transaction on Wednesday involving a consortium comprising staff and a series of well-known empowerment companies led by Kahiso and Cyril Ramaphosa's Shanduga Group. For those that may not know, again, with research, Kahiso is basically an empowerment vehicle which Johan Rupert and the Rembro company work with as well. You can always research the stuff on Google for yourself. In what was arguably the most significant private company BEE deal to date, some 25.5% of MSCSA's shareholding would be sold in a deal valued at about 200 million rand. The unlisted company had a yearly turnover of more than 7 billion rand, 5,000 employees and assets worth 3 billion rand. The buyers were confirmed as Cajizo Trust Investments, 7.5%, the Shanduga Group, 7.5%, the Max Steel Employee Trust at 5%, Piotona Development Investments 2.5%, Future Africa Investment Holdings 1%, uh, Cape 1%, representing the Son family, and Dr. Len Kona 1%. So what I do normally is I go and I try and see on Google if I can find all of these companies and see who's on the board of directors. Is there someone that's known, whether it's a politician or some big business person that's kind of involved? But I'll stop there. Some of the reasons I mention these things is because South Africans speak a lot about the tensions between Israel and Palestine. And a lot of your leaders, Cyril Ramaphosa being one of them, don't comment much on these things because they work very closely with Jewish people who are uh, representative of Israel. As we read earlier, Eric Sampson's done a lot of good work. Uh, he's donated a lot to Israel and he used to be based in Los Angeles, California and Tel Aviv which is in Israel. So it's very difficult when you're conflicted to speak out against any atrocities that are done by Israel because you're doing business and you're in bed with some of these people who, you know, represent Israel. The other problem, obviously, is that when you're given a PEE stake because we want to know what value does Cyril Ramaphosa bring? A lot of these guys, unfortunately, make sure that government doesn't disturb the businesses that they do. They make sure that they remove a lot of the red tape they make sure that they get favorable uh, tax uh, treatment uh, and any other business that may come their way. Sal Ramaphosa used to sit on the board of Bidvest if he wasn't the chairman. Bidvest is another Jewish company which had Brian Joffe as the head of the company. This was from the Mail and Guardian, mg.co.za, 
from November 2006, written by Sierra and Ryan. Just going to touch on a bit of this article. This was in 2006. Eric Sampson is probably South Africa's richest resident, though you don't hear much of him. Another very wealthy South African Jewish person that people don't know about, and maybe I'll try and profile, even though it's difficult to get information about him, is Jonathan Bear, who owns property in South Africa, on the continent, and even in the UK and in the rest of the world. His unlisted Max Steel Holdings business empire generates revenue of nearly 70 billion rand a year. And you've never heard of this guy. Company that's making 70 billion rand a year. Roughly equivalent in size to Cecil and supplies much of the steel used in the local industry. As I mentioned in earlier with Hendrik van der Beel and what the Afrikaners have done to industrialize South Africa, Cecil was one of the businesses that they built to make sure they, they refine their own oil and generate their own petrol and other fuel products. Especially in retaliation to when the sanctions were starting to come out and apartheid and the Afrikaans uh, regime was being snubbed by the rest of, of the world. Max Steel, one of, one of the 10 largest companies in South Africa, is part of a probe into steel pricing by the competition Tribuno. Tribuno. Another South African that wasn't known until their company listed, the company being Glencore. Glencore is a big commodities trading company, which was a spin-off from Mark Rich and Company, who was an American guy who had a commodities company, Mark and Rich, Mark Rich and Co. And then it split. Uh, I'm not sure into the other companies. Uh, I normally talk about Vitol. I normally speak about Trafigura, but I know Glencore directly uh, was one of the spin-offs. It's been in a lot of scandals uh, across the world, even to this day. Places like Brazil and parts of Africa, I think in the DRC, um, they've been known to bribe and have heavy corruption to be involved in funding rebels in terms of giving them weapons so they can overthrow regimes, so they can get favorable deals in some of the commodities in those countries. Um, Ivan Klossenberg, South African as well, who when he joined Glencore, chartered accountant, went to go and work, uh, I think in Australia, and then eventually moved to Switzerland and became the chief executive officer of Glencore. When they eventually listed, I think in South Africa and on the London Stock Exchange, he was then seen as the wealthiest South African at the time. I think he was worth something like 60 billion rand. But no one had known or heard of this guy before. In the same way, people don't know about Max Steel. You won't know Max Steel because it's not listed. A lot of the time we speak about listed assets. That's why you know of Johan Rupert, Rim Grow, Richmond. That's why you know of Patrice Mutipe, African Rainbow Minerals. That's why you know of Christo Visa, ShopRite and Pip Quartz because they're their assets are listed. And when it's listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange or elsewhere, then your financials need to be transparent to the public and people then see your shareholders. Situation like Max Steel, because it's private, you don't know who owns what, you don't know what's going where, but these are some of the assumptions that are made um, of Eric Sampson himself. This month, the tribunal will hear arguments in the case brought by Harmony Gold against steel maker Metal. I've spoken about Lakshmi Metal. Indian uh, billionaire who lives in London and it's 50% joint venture Max Steel International which markets Metal's products internationally. So these are two big steel giants, Metal Steel and Max Steel who actually sometimes come together to work together but in this case they're complaining that because they're working together they are now dealing with price fixing. The two companies have been named as respondents in the first case of excessive pricing ever brought before the tribunal. Though Max Steel International is named as a respondent in the case, it chose not to put up a defense. One reason for its supine response, according to documents before the tribunal, is the adverse publicity this would generate for the company. So the company didn't want to speak because they didn't want people prying into, into their business practices. So again, I'm reading this article particularly, particularly because when you've got, for example, the South African president, Sol Ramaphosa, who is involved with Max Steel because Shanduga his company owns a stake. It's going to be difficult for him to not have a conflict of interest when we speak about things like state capture. Again, I mentioned Ivan Klossenberg and I mentioned Glencore. Glencore is another company that Cyril Ramaphosa Shanduga had worked with. They supply coal to ESCOM. I believe Glencore ended up buying a very big coal mine called Extrata in South Africa. And I think they've built the biggest coal mining company potentially in the world. Uh, Glencore Extrata. Cyril Ramaphosa owns a stake. So again, we ask conflict of interest. Cyril was in charge of a certain division in ESCOM, which had to deal with some of these pricing issues and deal with load shedding. So you ask, is this person 
uh, conflict free. Ivan Klausenberg as well is a Jewish gentleman. Uh, normally, how you pick up certain Jews is if their surname ends with Berg or Stone um, or Vin, uh, Enthoven, Ivanhoven, uh, for example, or, or Witz, uh, W-I-T-Z, Chikovitz, whatever. Those are normally Jewish uh, surnames. See, I think I want to read one more. One more article. And then we'll lay Eric Samson to rest. Excuse the pun. This was from News 24, published on the 20th of March, 2014. I can't see who wrote the article. Let's see if I go to the bottom. No. Okay. The article's headline is Steel Magnate Donates 100 Million Rand Towards Mandela Hospital. What started as a dream for former President Nelson Mandela five years ago became a reality today. Ground was broken at the Wits University in Parktown. Ground was broken at the Wits University in Parktown, marking the beginning of construction of the 1 billion rand Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital, which will be the fourth pediatric hospital in Africa. Raising funds for this massive project has not been easy, said CEO of the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital Trust, Sbongile Mkabela, but it was worth it. Mkabela said 570 million rand of the 1 billion rand needed to build and furnish the hospital has been raised so far, and it was thanks to many South Africans and international companies operating locally which dug deep into their pockets. Among the big donors was steel mogul Eric Sampson, who donated 100 million rand towards building and equipping a 200-bed facility. Mkabela recalled the day Samson surprised a meeting of which he was part of, of which he was part when he said he would be forking out 100 million rand without even cringing. We were all stunned, she said. Mkabela said while Samson was the biggest local donor, Bill and Melinda Gates donated the same amount, 100 million rand. But, she said, 60% of the money raised so far has come from South Africa. Usually when one thinks of fundraising, we think about international donors, but this time around, South Africa came to the party. We are grateful to everybody who contributed because without them, Tata Mandela's dream wouldn't have become a reality, she said. The construction of the hospital is expected to be completed in 2016. Once operational, it will specialize in cancer, heart defects, kidney failure, complex birth defects, and general pediatric surgery serving children from across Southern Africa. Other big donors include the Oppenheimer Foundation, which donated 12 million rand, the Mutsipe Foundation, which donated 7 million rand, and Anglo Gold, which contributed 5 million rand. I will stop there. Eric Sampson, a giant, Jewish giant, who matriculated at Park Town Boys High, went on to live in America, built a giant of a business called Max Steel, which, is worth, uh, which was worth over $1 billion last year. He passed away in January last year, and he's done a lot of great work uh, especially donating to hospitals in South Africa, as we know, with the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital, but hospitals in Israel as well, and also in America. Again, like I said, great man, great businessman. He's done a lot for South Africa. He's done a lot for the Jews. He's done a lot for the Strait of Israel. But we do have to consider as well that some of this stuff does affect some of the issues we complain about, especially when we speak about the disenfranchised black people in South Africa. A lot of your leaders, unfortunately, will never ever fight the way you want them to fight aggressively because unfortunately they are in bed with these people there's nothing wrong with it i guess morally because these are business people who are choosing to donate money to them who choose to fund some of their campaigns i know another jewish person Stephen sard who's one of the co-founders of aspen pharmacy or pharmaceuticals which currently is uh, going to be manufacturing the johnson and johnson vaccine in south africa and who also initially had the monopoly for ARVs back then. I think it's been split up into three companies now. But this is kind of how it works in the country. And the sooner a lot of people understand some of these things, I think the better. You know, hopefully as time goes by, I'll, I'll review guys like Nati Kirsch, who's absolutely amazing as a business person. Uh, Brian Joffe, a giant of business as well. Uh, the Enthoven family, they don't have much information, but I'll see what I can find. And then other people, Ivan Klossenberg, as I'd said. I remember um, the South African Jewish Board of Deputies 
rewards a lot of or awards a lot of South African business people every year for good work they've done. And I've seen them award people like Patrice Mutsibe for some of the great work that they've done in this country as well. This is their circle. These are their friends that they work with. As time goes on, hopefully I'll profile some of the great Afrikaans business people as well. We speak a lot about the Stellenbosch Mafia, but we don't speak about the Jews. We haven't even started speaking about some of the Indian Muslims who are also really, really great business people in this country. The Mia family, which owns a lot of the land that has built Waterfall City close to Midrand, uh, where the N1 passes through. Um, I think we've got the Ranchard family as well in, in the world, in, in this country. We've got the Aklawires. Uh, we've got a big Amin family in KZN and other big families that have, <laughs> that have done really, really amazing work. And then maybe as time goes on, we can also unpack some of the giants of black business, not just Umaponya, not just Ramaphosa, not just the Mutsipes, but we can speak about uh, Robert Gometias, we can speak about the Gnene families, we can speak about other unknown black families in farming, in mining, um, in, in wholesale, uh, and in other spaces in this country. We've got BEE companies like Pembani, like Pamodzi, Tebe Investment Corporation, uh, Zigo Investments, Asandile Zumu, and a whole host of others. We can speak forever. Like I said, uh, I've got a, a nice hobby in researching a lot of rich people, studying how business works. At some point, I really, really thought I wanted to be this big, big, huge business titan as well and become a dollar billionaire and contribute to some of the things that are close to my heart, especially choirs, especially rugby, etc. Um, I guess for now, I'll just become the Robert Marawa of business and speak about business in the way I, in the best way I know how. Not necessarily that I'm a player or a coach or a manager, but I have a brain for business. I've done a lot of research and I can connect some of the dots as well. Pen you all the black pen. Let's carry on with the education. I hope this will inspire you and help you to reach out to Jewish business people. I've, I've reached out to a lot myself. They've been very forthcoming with education and information and connections and networks. Jewish people are brilliant at business. It is their favorite hobby. In the same way black people are good at dancing and soccer and basketball, Jewish people, business runs in their blood. Anyways, pin you all the black pen. Have a great day. Cheers.